We are joined by Dean Hubbard. <laughs> Glenn Hubbard, by the way, is, is not only the head of the business school here, he also happened to serve at the White House, where he was chairman of the Council of Economic Advisors. So this is a man who knows not only about what's happening in the economy, but also what's happening with these students. You talk to them all the time. What's the question in, that you'd like to pose? to Mr. Gates and Mr. Buffett. Well, thanks, uh, Becky, and thanks to both of you for being here today, and Warren, welcome home. Thank you. To, uh, <laughs> this is but, Warren, one thing you said years ago that's always stuck with me is you, know, you never know who's swimming naked till the tide goes out. And that, of course, uh, says maybe there's some value in knowing when it's going to be low tide. Uh, it also says there's value in knowing context. How do we develop, how do we encourage business leaders to understand context and connect the dots? Well, I think, I think they've learned a lot about that in the last year, and some, some never learn. Uh, you know, it, it, uh, you, I have... At Berkshire, we have actually 70-some managers, and uh, I think they're, most of them are a fair amount smarter than they were 15 months ago, but they were plenty smart to go in. And, and, uh, but I, I, you know, I think that what I learned from a Ben Graham, who, who came up here every Thursday afternoon, he didn't need to do it, you know, the, he donated whatever he got paid back to the school and all of that, but uh, having sound principles takes you through everything. and and. And the bedrock principles that really I learned from Graham and Dodd, uh, I haven't had to do anything with them. I mean, they, they, they take me through good periods, they take me through bad periods, and, and uh, in the end, I don't worry about them because I know they work. Bill, what do you think is the most important character for a business leader to have? Well, it's surprising that the fundamentals of business are pretty straightforward. You know, you try to take more in an income than you spend in cost, and you know, that's a, a pretty straightforward subtraction. But it's, it's surprising in terms of projecting out into the years ahead that, you know, are we making the right investments? Are we gaining on the competition? Are we making it a little bit harder uh, for people to replace what we're doing? That kind of common sense, I guess you've got to develop it through experience. And, you know, I think it's neat if you're young, you can see that in a small scale. Uh, and be hands-on with it because a lot of people who start with large businesses may have a hard time with it. So, you know, the, the basics are, are pretty straightforward. Uh, learning how it, how it works and doesn't work in a variety of industries uh, by reading a lot, I think that's, you know, something that comes with time. And a business school is an intense period where you can uh, get ahead of the game. I send one message out every year and a half or two years the next. They get one letter from me every couple of years, and it basically it says, run this business like it's the only business that your family can own for the next hundred years. You can't sell it, but every year, don't measure it by the earnings in that quarter of that year. Measure it by whether the moat around that business, what gives it competitive advantage over time, has widened or narrowed. And if you keep doing that for a hundred years, it's going to work out very well. And then I tell them, basically, if the reason for doing something is everybody else is doing it, it's not good enough. I mean, if you have to use that as a reason, forget it. You haven't got a good reason for doing something, so never use that. Okay, let's get to some student questions. 